A second feature film on this special effects occasion is the great MGM cult favorite from 1956, Forbidden Planet, starring two Canadians, Walter Pidgeon and Leslie Nielsen, and that lovely American actress, Anne Francis. Plus, the talents of Earl Holliman, who plays the cook. Warren Stevens and Jack Kelly are also in the cast, as is a robot named Robbie, who can make dresses, brew whiskey, and speak 187 languages. Marvin Miller's voice does very, very nicely here. But some of the film's biggest stars never appear in the screen. That's because Arnold Gillespie and his team are special effects wizards who work behind the scenes in order to create the wonderful futuristic magic. Arnold Gillespie built Rome for Ben-Hur in 1926 and again in 1959. He even burned a miniature Rome for Quovatis in 1951. He toppled San Francisco in the famous earthquake scene in 1936 and felled giant jungle trees and caused tidal waves in Green Dolphin Street in 1947. But now, now it is that time, ladies and gentlemen. Time to prepare for a journey into outer space deeper than you've ever gone before. Here now... Forbidden Planet. And that was Forbidden Planet. And now you, you out there, have come face to face with the monster of id and survived. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the adventure. As you watched that film, did any of you have the feeling you had encountered the plot before? Well, the research that Erica D'Souza did for my script indicates that what we have here is nothing less than a science fiction treatment of Shakespeare's The Tempest. With the monster of id, a Caliban figure, Robbie the Robot, a clone for Ariel the Sprite, Dr. Morbius, a kind of Prospero, Anne Francis, a Miranda, and the planet of Altair Four standing in for the island where Shakespeare's play unfolds. Interesting idea, isn't it? Before we go to our interviews with two of the stars of Forbidden Planet, Anne Francis and Earl Holliman, here's a little matter that involves our film. Gaining great popularity these days are laser discs the optical disc format for video programming which was launched in the consumer market in 1978. One company under the trademark name, the Criterion Collection, has over 120 classic and important contemporary films in their catalog on the laser disc format. High production values, restored footage, digital sound, plus specially designed video supplements, and second soundtrack audio commentary are just a few of the characteristics of laser discs. Now, the big news is that the Criterion Collection, available in Canada through Polygram, has released a laser disc version of Forbidden Planet, including a segment of the film of the making of the movie that contains scenes that were cut from the movie and scenes before the special effects were added, followed by how they looked after the special effects were added. Now, here are a few clips from the laser disc of Forbidden Planet to show you what I mean. I thought you would find that item fascinating. Certainly the whole development of laser discs brings a powerful learning tool to the art and science of movies, providing additional dimensions to the understanding of a film, soundtracks, visuals that were never possible before. Now, as promised, we go to two of the stars of Forbidden Planet, Anne Francis and Earl Holliman. Miss Francis appeared in a number of fine films and television programs, including her own TV series, Honey West. The movies include Portrait of Jenny, The Whistle of Eaton Falls, A Lion is in the Street, Bad Day at Black Rock, and the Blackboard Jungle. Mr. Holliman is all, well, he also did a good deal of TV work, notably Twilight Zone and his co-starring role in the Police Woman series. His movies include Broken Lance, The Bridges of Toko Ri, The Rainmaker, Summer and Smoke, and The Gunfight at the O.K. Corral. Forbidden Planet. That certainly wasn't your average science fiction film, was it? No, and when we did it, at the time that, um, at the time we were shooting it, uh, we really didn't know it was going to turn into the classic that it became. Oh. You really didn't? Well, when we were shooting it, we had to get more and more scared, more and more scared. And we were reacting to things that weren't there that Disney put in later. You know, the Di Disney, Disney created the monsters of Id. Yeah. Disney oh. created the monsters of, uh, the monster of the Id and did all of the special effects. Oh, see, I've forgotten that. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. What an effect yeah. that is. Marvelous. Just marvelous. But, uh, Fabulous. I mean, I was flabbergasted when I finally saw it. I had no idea what was, you know, going to be happening, how they were going to punch it all up, but it worked. It's like talking to Faye Ray about making King Kong, as I did once. She never, never did saw you it. really? She never saw it, of course, because he was only 18. Oh, well, yeah, sure. Never, never, never. She talked never to her about could, that. So, oh, what yeah. fun. I'd love to see yeah. that. That'd be fun. Did you know at the time you were dealing with Shakespeare's The Tempest? You... I don't know whether it was really the Tempest or not. I know be. a lot of people compare it to that, but I don't. I don't. 
I don't really. I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. they were. You know, maybe maybe they vaguely were. you might agree, but not any. No, you know, not, 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 yeah, not that. the Taliban and uh, the, you know, the, at any rate, it was, uh, it's been treated that way. You I know it has, in, and in, it's in, been in, interesting for, yeah. for, uh, for studies and, and, uh, you know, it's a good way to get the young Film people to read Shakespeare, yes. Treat that connection, and of yeah. course it gets sure. young people reading Shakespeare sure. and they do all kinds of marvelous things. Memories of working with Walter Pigeon, one of our, uh, late, alas, but uh, most august Canadian. Wonderful man. Wonderful man. He loved to um, to uh, narrate um, or quote naughty limericks. That oh. He collected naughty oh, limericks. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He had a lot of fun with that. And he would, you know, do these naughty limericks just before camera rolls, naturally, you know. As <laughs> a matter of fact, at that time, I had a wonderful little poodle dog uh, that I had named Smidgen. And, of course, Smidgen's first name was Walter. Walter Smidgen? Walter Smidgen. Now, some friends thinking they were very, very funny put in the uh, to the Palm Springs local newspaper when I was visiting some friends there that Anne Francis and Walter Smidgen had been visiting. Got us in a lot of trouble. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, People thought it was, you know, a mixed well, up name and they'd gotten that. Walter and I were having an affair. Oh. Yeah. 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 He wasn't that kind. Funny, silly business we're in. No, he wasn't. No, I, yeah, I heard no, that. I don't think he was. No, I, I gathered that but from... But at, at this point, I would certainly say no. Not that I know of. I gathered that from Jure Garson when I was talking to him. No, he's very straight and he's just... She yeah. spoke the same way that you do about that. Man. Of course, Earl Holloman was in it, and, and uh, he's doing a lot of theater, and he also has been uh, very important with actors and others for uh, animals. He, uh, and he's done a lot with that to help animals. So I worked with Earl in uh, Don't Go Near the Water. Oh, that's right. With Glenn Ford and oh, Earl, right. Earl Holloman, yeah. Illustrious names yeah. there. How did you get the part of the cook in our film tonight, The Forbidden Planet? Well, this is, I, I have to confess to you, this is not my favorite film. Uh, it was a big success for, for and it's a real cult film. I'm, I'm constantly running into people who say to me, gee, you were in my favorite movie, and I keep thinking, oh, I hope they're going to say The Rainmaker. Yes, of yeah. course. Uh, but they, you know, half the time they say Forbidden Planet. Oh, sure. Um, well, it was a big hit at the time. It was directed by a little fellow named uh, Freddie Wilcox, for whom I had worked two pictures prior to that in a picture called Tennessee Champ, and I played a punch drunk prize fighter. And he was, uh, and the part was one of those parts that kind of walks away with the film. It was a wonderful part. So he figured he had to have me in this picture. Well, I read the script, and I, and I thought, gee, this isn't really something I'd be good at, you know. Uh, interesting script. The story was interesting, but I just didn't think the part was right for me. But anyway, I ended up doing it, you know, and uh, I, I was flattered that he wanted me. I ended up doing it. And I never, I was uncomfortable in almost every scene in that movie. Yeah. You, know? uh, you were uncomfortable. Yeah. Any other memories of making The Forbidden Planet? Not your favorite film, I know. Um, or do you want to talk, could you talk about the stars, Walter Pigeon, what he was like? I, you know, I never got to know Walter Pigeon very well. Um, uh, he seemed a very pleasant man. In fact, the whole cast, it was great fun. I mean, Anne Francis, and, uh, later on, and uh, that funny character I play, it's hard to believe that he grew up and became a guy, uh, uh, the, the young leading guy in the Don't Get Near the Water. I played a sailor, and Anne Francis and I played opposite each other. We were the love interest later in another picture. Beautiful lady. Oh, yeah, and a sweetheart. She yeah. is a sweetheart. Yeah. Still is. We met her the other day. Did you? Yeah. She's a, she's a lovely, lovely lady. And, uh, oh, gosh, we had such a good cast. We had a lot of fun in that show because, yeah, I mean, off, you know, we yeah. a bunch of good guys. And, uh, um, I mean, Jack Kelly. And, yeah, it was Leslie Nielsen's first picture. Our Canadian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Leslie was so kind of seemed so serious at the time, you know. And it's wonderful what's happened to him. I, I yeah. love the fact that he's uh, now being able to capitalize on his humor. Yeah. After all these years, yeah, it's, it's funny, terrific. isn't it? Yeah. You can never tell him it's crazy, you know? crazy. Uh, Jim no. Drury was a, uh, at a, uh, one of the. He was one of the crew. Remember James Drury, who oh. later became the Virginian. Yes. Yeah, he was one of the crew. How do you account? At the time, you told me you didn't realize what you were doing in this sense, but. How do you account for the movie's continuing popularity, the cult status, and so on? Have you ever figured out? Then you may not have known, well, but now. At the time, I had been involved in metaphysics. I, I became interested in metaphysics when I was about 16. So the, the math subconscious made a lot of sense to me, that the math subconscious could come up with monsters and, you know, mass thinking can create 
horrendous wars and numerous other things. So that all was <clears throat> rather logical to me. But at that time, there weren't that many people who were particularly into the, the, the power of the mass subconscious. Right. And I think today, I mean, it's sort of grown more and more and more. People are aware of the fact that monsters can be created by the thought of, of, of many people, all kinds of monsters, as we're seeing happening now all over our planet, politically and in every other way. Which is why it uh, has a lasting importance to put your head in an awful lot to say. Yes, it does. It wasn't all as also apparent then. That's but right. It's grown up an interesting answer. There it is. Well, that's what I think. I, I think people think have caught on to that aspect. I also think it uh, has to do with the excellence of it. Just a ruddy good show. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And that was Anne Francis and Earl Holliman who appeared in our film tonight, Forbidden Planet. Well, on that note, we wrap up another session here of Saturday Night of the Movies, a session in which we explored the theme, The Magic of Special Effects.